Right here we're looking at a cripple wall viewed from the side. So here's the upper top plate, the lower top plate, this is the stud, and then these are the joists. Again, look at that from the side. So here's a joist, and here's a joist, and here's a joist. Now what this detail is uh, used for is this, if this joist is too close to there, so you can't actually reach your hand up in here and put in a framing anchor, an L90 or something. You can't you just simply your hand won't fit right there. So what they do is they put the plywood up like this and then they put this uh, two by six probably right here. They nail the two by six there and then they put in this framing anchor right here, which connects to the top plate uh, right here. Uh, we're going to look at a different way to do this. Uh, that's a lot simpler. So what you can do is you can go to this joist right here and make enough room to put your hand there. So what you have to do is you take this joist and you notch it. Let's you know, say you notch it every 16 inches or so so you can reach your hand up. So just imagine there's a notch. Let's say there's just a notch right here. So you can just reach your hand up and you go ahead and use a palm nailer and you put in your L90 and you're all done and then you forget about all this nonsense right here. It's completely unnecessary. Now, the building code does say, you know, you're not supposed to notch joists, um, especially, you know, on the, on the ends like that. But if you look in the code, what it'll tell you is that if you have full dimension two by eights or two by tens, which is what we always see, you can span from here to here 24 inches. And if you look at this, that's about what we have. So we have 16 inches from here to here. And then from here to here, we have uh, 8 inches. So, you know, that is 24 inches. So, you know, you could probably just remove this joist. You wouldn't have any trouble at all. So, you know, notching it is uh, code compliant. You won't have any problems with it. And it sure is a whole lot easier. Let's go ahead and look at that detail again. We saw the easiest way where simply you do you just notch it and that's all you need to do. However, there's this way that we found in FEMA P1100 and we're going to go and we're going to compare that with another system. So in this system what they did is they took a piece of plywood and they put it on the cripple wall and they didn't nail it. They didn't nail it to the top plate, so they just stuck it up there. And then after that, they put this 2x4 or this 2x6 in here, and then they nailed it to the joist. So now this 2x6 or 2x4 is connected to the joist, which we want to restrain from movement. So now this uh, joist is butted up against this piece of plywood, and then they take this piece of steel, it'd be a L90, and then they install it. So these nails are only an inch and a half long, so you have to put them an inch and a half here, and then you would put uh, one inch and a half here and you'd only get uh, one inch of penetration because this is uh, half an inch. So it's real minimal, the amount of strength you'd get out of that. So, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You would normally nail the plywood up and then put in this piece of hardware. Um, anyway, this detail does have a few problems. Now let's go ahead and look and see the other way that's used. And in this method, what's done is the first thing that's done is the plywood and the two by four or two by six are connected together. So what they've done, you see this nail right here, that's an eight penny nail. And they simply nailed that to the two by six. And then they nailed that to the joist. So what would happen when this joist moved, it would transfer to this nail. And those are, you know, big nails, uh, 12 penny nails. Then that would go into the eight penny nail and then that would in turn go down you know cause the plywood to move here at the base here now just to be you know really make a, a good job make all the connections we can we go ahead and put an eight penny nail in here and then we would put a 12 penny nail in here and that way any connection that we have between the existing joist and the top plate uh, we'll take advantage of. So what that means is when this end joist moves, that force will transfer to this upper top plate. That'll transfer to this uh, nail, which will then transfer down to the lower top plate. 
and then through this nail it'll go to the joist and we'll have a complete load path down to the foundation so this one is actually a whole lot simpler it's just nails you know you put some nails here you put some nails here you put some nails here and you put some nails here and you know with nail guns everything goes so fast and you know compared to this uh this system right here you know it's really a lot more difficult now the way this should have been done is they should have put the plywood up and then nail the plywood <clears throat> to this upper top plate and then nailed the this uh, this block to the uh to the to the joist right here and then made this metal connection and when they made the metal connection this one can be inch and a half because that's what what the l90 is designed for but this one should have been uh, uh should have been two inches because we need a, a half inch through the plywood and then we need one inch into the framing so this detail here you know it's got some it's got some problems and uh, whether or not P1100 is going to deal with that, I have no idea. But this system here is a whole lot simpler.